Thank you, Jesus. Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. We just had a wonderful praise and worship. Oh, my God. I tell you what, I'm ready to teach. I hope you've been uh, following this series on insight into a pastor's heart. You're going to get blessed. You're going to find some things out that you perhaps no one has ever taught you. But guess what? Today's the day that you receive wisdom, revelation, information, and impartation. Praise the Lord. Amen? All right, good. Let's go to the throne. Let's all bow our heads, please. Gracious Father, we come before you in the wonderful name of your Son. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much, Father. Father, you offer us salvation, and we had to receive it. Father, you offered us the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide us, and, and we had to receive it. And now, Father, you offer us the gift, which is a pastor. A pastor is a gift according to Ephesians 4.11. Praise the Lord. God, you sent this pastor, and now the people need to receive him. Praise God. Father, I thank you that we are a gift directly from you to perfect and upgrade the Christian walk. And all the people that are in this house right now, hearing the voice of the Lord, may you say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, it is our custom here at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center to give God a wonderful applause. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's write this down before we read 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. That's where we're at right now. A pastor must have been taught And then he is able to transmit the teaching he has received. No pastor that has not been taught cannot transmit any information to the people of God. Now, how do you get taught? How does this pastor get taught? How does a pastor get taught? He has to know how to go into the presence of God. He has to have a relationship with the Word of God. Praise the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit comes in. He's the revealer. If the Holy Spirit doesn't reveal, the pastor cannot receive. And the pastor cannot transmit to the people of God. Did you hear that? To the people of God. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it says, And the things that you have heard from me among many, Witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now I have news for you. Yes, Paul was instructing Timothy. But you too have to be able to hear among many witnesses here. Praise the Lord. And you have to receive what God is giving you. You have to commit to what God has given you. Praise the Lord. You are a faithful man. You are a faithful woman. Praise the Lord. Once you commit to the word of God and you commit to receive, praise the Lord. Amen. You must commit to receive the gift that God has given you. Then you can go and teach others. Praise the Lord. You cannot teach others unless you have committed yourself, to the Word, to the Holy Spirit, and to the gift that He's given us. Praise God. Amen? Now, in verse 3, it says this. Thank you, Father. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of, uh, of Jesus Christ. So in other words, you're going to go through some stuff because you are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So don't get afraid when you go through things. It's just part of the lesson. Please write that down. The hardship is part of the lesson. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. The hardship is part of the lesson. It's part of the program. God knows what he's doing with you. 
He wants to develop you through the suffering, through the hardship. Doesn't mean you're going to be all the time in a place of hardship. You hear me? But you will go. He said you will go. But the key here is to endure when you're going through it. So please write that down. I must endure. I must endure whenever I am going through it. And you have to say this. This too shall pass, Brother Gary. This too shall pass. You turn to your missus and say, honey, this too shall pass. When we came out of that, we're going to come out of this. Praise God. It's a season. It is a program. It's a lesson. Please listen to me in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. What you're going through is not forever. It's a season. Praise God. And you have to receive it. Just like you receive the gift of salvation. <laughs> you got saved because you received it. You believed it. Then you confessed it. But you had to go through a, 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 a lesson. You had to go through something before you can receive Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Give me three amen. Amen, amen, and amen. It just doesn't work. It's, it, it's not a fast food. It's not like getting online on McDonald's drive through and saying, can I have a double cheeseburger, french fries, and a soda? Sure. Pay here, pick it up over there. It doesn't work that way. Praise the Lord. You have to, you have to go through the endurance. Now, the key is not to grumble. <laughs> the key is not to complain. The key is not to go through the, go, allow yourself to go, go into the flesh. Because when you go into the flesh, you're angry. You'll get angry. You'll get upset. And you won't be able to focus. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you hearing me? And you won't be able to give God honor. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. You won't be able to give God honor. Okay? In fact, when you go into the flesh, what you do is you dishonor your God. I'm talking to believers here, am, am, am I? I'm not talking about people who don't know Christ. See? So that's why it's important for you to stay in your place. See, the body of Christ must learn how to stay in their place and go through this endurance, perseverance, and then you'll be able to honor your father. Your father. Praise the Lord. Your father. In fact, write this down. Honor is a seed. Honor is a seed. And you sow it. And what do you reap? Access. <laughs> When you honor the Father, you sow the seed of honor to your Father in heaven. He allows you to go deeper in his presence. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish I had some people to know something about the Holy Spirit. See? You dishonor him, guess what happened? Write this down, you produce the curse. You produce the curse. You ain't, you ain't supposed to be producing no curse. God didn't call, call you to live in the curse. He called you to live in the blessing. Write this down, please. Where there is no honor, there is no life. Where there is no honor, there is no life. I don't honor God, I have no life. So you can really say, honor prolongs your life. <laughs> if you want to say it like that, honor prolongs my life. The moment I stopped being disobedient and I became obedient to God, he said, good. Write this down, Isaiah 1, 19. He said, good. Now he's willing and obedient. Now he'll eat the good of the land. I wish I had a witness here. You got to understand, you cannot work. The kingdom that you're serving is invisible. So the instruction that you're receiving, you cannot see it. But you got to get revelation and learn how to work it. Are you getting it, Daddy Don? The moment you honor your father, the only moment you honor Jesus, praise the Lord, he starts producing in your life. Come on, somebody. He starts producing in your life. He starts producing in your life. He starts, he's a multiplier, not a subtractor. 
He doesn't take away. He gives. And if you're faithful in the little things, he'll put you in charge of a lot of things. If you're faithful in the little things, he'll put you in charge of a lot of things. But without the seat of honor, you'll have no access. Without the seat of honor, you'll have no access. If we really want to, see what the Holy Spirit just did right now? He's switching this thing on us. If you really, 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 really want the king, the key to the kingdom of God, it starts with honor. Honor your father. When you wake up in the morning, what do you say? Oh, God, another day? Or do you say, oh, thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. You're going to have to be different. See, you're going to have to be different because you know that you never was called to fit in. You were called to stand now. Every single one of you that are here, you that are watching me right now through the video, you were called to stand out. So stop trying to fit in. You ain't going to fit in. Time for you to change your way of doing things. When you walk and pray, God will talk. Write that down. When you walk and pray, God will talk. If you grumble, you go without. You get nothing. If you pray, you'll get the answer. And don't tell me, well, I tried praying, it don't work. No, you don't work. Pray at work. I know Jesus a lot longer than you. I know Jesus... I know Jesus a lot longer than I know you. That's what I'm trying to say. So somebody's lying here. And it ain't my Jesus. My Jesus is not lying. He's, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. So don't tell me it don't work. You don't work. So thank God that you found yourself a gift. And let that gift teach you how to walk in the kingdom of God. And that's what a pastor does. He teaches the people. Praise the Lord, somebody. He teaches the people. To maintain the lifestyle of honor. Put that down. To maintain the lifestyle of honor. We're not here to build membership. We're here to what? To what? We're here to disciple disciples. Praise the Lord. Membership, membership does one thing. You have to pay dues. I'm a member of uh, so and so. Yes, I am. <clears throat> so you got to pay dues. I know. Oh, boy, do I know. But you can't break covenant. You can't break covenant. That's what the Lord said. You ride it. When God wants to bless you, he'll put somebody in your life. And when God's going to bless you, too, he'll take somebody out of your life. He will. I said, season's over. This is it. Either we, 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 we walk in honor and work our responsibilities or we just go to the wayside and get nothing. God's a God of honor. God's a God of honor. We need to learn, we need to learn how, to, how to create the right response when things come against us. Going in the flesh ain't going to help us. That's why we have to cultivate honor. And it will keep us in our place. Cultivate the seed of honor. And it will keep you in your place. Honor your father. Why do you think he says, honor your father and your mother? <laughs> God works through your father and the mother. You hear me? God works through your father and mother. God works through your father and mother. Sir, I never knew my father. Yes, you did. He's in heaven. He's your creator. Praise the Lord. Don't tell me you never knew him. He always knew you. You just didn't take the time out to be introduced to him. But now that you're being introduced to him, Walk in honor. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go back to the pastor teaching. All right? So therefore, a pastor must have been taught before he can transmit any teaching to anybody. All right? And let me tell you another thing. For those of you that are in ministry, especially those watching me out there, the higher you go, 
the cleaner you got to get. The higher you go, the cleaner you got to get. And the higher God brings you up, the lower you have to go. The lower I go, the higher he'll bring me up. When I bring myself up high, I will be brought down. But when I humble myself in the mighty hand of God, God will exalt me. God will exalt you when you humble yourself in the mighty hand of God. So when you get a blessing, that day you need to go down lower and thank God. Now those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. You won't understand in the flesh, but that's okay. You keep tuning in, you keep hearing the word, and it'll go into your heart, I promise you. Okay, let's go to first let's go to Titus chapter one. Praise the Lord. Titus, the book of Titus, chapter one, and we're gonna go to Titus one nine. Praise God, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Nobody, nobody knows how to honor. People are forgetting how to honor. Honor who? Your spiritual father. Your father who's in heaven. Praise the Lord. Abraham, had a, Abraham was a great pattern. Abraham was wonderful. Abraham, Abraham taught us how to, how to honor the father. Praise God. And how to, walk, how to walk here in this earth as a spiritual father. Because he honored the father in heaven. Amen? Okay, you there? First, uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 9. Can I read it, please? Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who are contradicting. Now there in, first, in Titus chapter 1, verse 9, that word, sound doctrine, is a noun. We learned that, right? Remember? So what is doctrine? It's a noun. And what does it mean? It means good teaching, sound teaching. Sound doctrine is teaching. So whenever you see that in the Bible, sound doctrine, that means they're talking about teaching. Sound doctrine. Sound teaching. Praise the Lord. Amen? So listen to this one. A pastor is required to speak and lead. Through what? Through sound doctrine. How, do you, how, does, how does a man of God lead Jesus' flock? Did you hear what I said? I ain't getting no help in here. Praise the Lord. How does a man of God lead Jesus' flock? By teaching sound doctrine. Thank you, Mother Dottie. Amen. You ain't my flock, you're Jesus' flock. I ain't no chief shepherd here. I'm a shepherd, I'm an overseer, I'm a pastor, yes. He's given me an office. You don't have to like the man, but you have to respect the office. <laughs> Ooh, Lord Jesus, don't let them not hear this. You don't have to like the man, but you have to respect the office. Because God put that man in the office. All right? So you have to respect the office, praise the Lord. So a pastor is required to speak and lead. In other words, to lead them by speaking, Jesus said. Jesus said. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. So as the pastor follows Christ, you follow the pastor. When the pastor stopped following Christ, then you stop following the pastor. I didn't get no amen. See? That man of God goes crooked, go crazy, you get yourself out of there. In the name of Jesus. But see the, the proper protocol that God put? Yeah, you can follow. Yeah, you can follow God yourself. Yeah, you don't need anybody. But you need the Holy Ghost. You can say all you want. You need the Holy Ghost. And guess what? Once again, God sent you a pastor. And you have to receive him too. And that pastor is sent directly from God to you. That pastor, every Sunday, every Wednesday, whenever you see that pastor, it's like Christmas. You should open up a gift 
If you don't open up the gift, you ain't going to get no word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The pastor is like a package. And you open up the gift. Every, look, every day I send out Texas to the core. And I give you a word that God gives me. God told me to do that. So every day, that pastor, whenever you see that pastor, that pastor should have a word from God. Did you see the game tonight? It was wonderful. Okay, take care. See you Sunday. That ain't no pastor. That's a Mickey Mouse. Every time that pastor see you, he should be able to encourage you. That's what the Bible says in Titus verse 9. He should be able to hold fast to the faithful word of God as he has been or she has been taught. And then he should be able to exhort you. So that means if you're feeling down, he's got the power to bring you up. Praise God. And how he does that? By giving you sound doctrine. This is how you pick a pastor. Because really you don't pick the pastor. God brings you to the pastor. Go figure that one out. You can pick the church, but you can't pick the pastor. God give you the pastor because it's a gift from God. The pastor can't pick the disciple. God gives him the disciple. Now, it's powerful because God can use you to sharpen my, my blade. I'm not getting no amen here. They like this traditional stuff. Let's go to church and put the tithes and the offering and, and praise the Lord and go home. You can sharpen my blade and I can sharpen your blade. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. But you have to respect the office of that man. And simply if you don't, then you have to say, Lord, send me where I belong. I want to be where you want me to be. And that's how you do it. And you can't get offended. Because once again, we're not, remember, we're talking about God's gift. We're not boasting on the, on the pastor now. Remember, I have to go low so that you can go high. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what John said, John the Baptist. He says, I go lower so he can go higher. Praise the Lord. And if you're God's people, that means you're a gift from God to the pastor too. See how this works? The pastor's a gift to you. You don't belong to the pastor, and the pastor don't belong to you, but we both belong to Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord. And we respect the office. We respect the office. I respect the office of the elder. The elder respect the office of the pastor, of the overseer, the one that goes into the presence of God and pray for you. And ask God, God, give me a word for them, Father. What do they need to hear? The pastor shouldn't be going into his library and says, today, this week, we're going to teach on laying on hands. <laughs> Who made him boss? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. The teacher must have a principle, and his principle's name is Jesus. And if I don't walk and I don't talk, and I don't pray to Jesus, how can I hear his voice? And you know how God works? He works with the believers. He works with the saints. He works with the elder. And he works with the overseer. It's a perfect body. There's a finger. There's a hand. There's a foot. There's a toe. There's an ear. There's an eye. But there's only one head. And that head's name is Jesus. He's the chief shepherd. Say that with me three times. Sheep, shepherd. Sheep, shepherd. Sheep, shepherd. Thank you, Lord. And that's giving honor where honor is due. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. So a pastor is required to speak and lead. And how he does that? He leads them by speaking. Jesus said. Let's go to John chapter 10, please. John cha chapter 10. Praise the Lord. John 10, 27, please. John 10, 27. John 10, 27. John 10, 27. Thank you, Father is right. Thank you, Lord. 
I love this. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. How does a pastor lead? How does a pastor rule? How does a pastor oversee? Jesus said. The Bible says. The Word says. Who's the Word? Who's the Word? Thank you for somebody. Jesus is the Word. So I should be advising you in what? In the Word. Not what I feel in my heart you should do. Oh, somebody help me in here. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So if the word don't say it, I don't do it. You shouldn't be doing it either. Now, when somebody tell you, watch this one now. I'm going to help you with this one. When somebody say, God told me to do this, then that means God has to provide for me for you to be able to do it. So if God told you that you're supposed to do it, don't murmur and don't complain and don't ask for no gifts. If God told you to do it, then you need to do it. And I, I certainly don't want to interfere if God told you to do it. Come on, nobody helping me in here. Praise the Lord. I'm teaching better than you shouting. Praise God. The moment you say God told me to do it, then you need to do it. And I'm not going to interfere <laughs> between you and God. So you come, don't complain, don't murmur. And take what I give you. Okay. A pastor is required to speak. How? Like this. Praise the Lord. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now, you ain't going to follow no pastor that is not speaking with the voice of Jesus. Write this down. Write this down, please. A pastor must lead with the voice of Jesus. That's how, that's how the disciples will want to follow that pastor. Because they'll say that pastor is hearing the voice of Jesus. Are you, are you learning? Please learn this. Please learn, and I'm not disrespecting anybody, because I have to honor, I have to honor, but God will allow me to honor with what I have. I can't honor you with what I don't have. I'd like to kick this pulpit right now, but nobody's going <laughs> to say he's gone crazy. <laughs> I only can honor you with what God's given me to give you. I can't honor you with what I don't have. So be careful when you say, God told me. I feel the Holy Spirit. My God, I feel the, because I'm going to hold you to your word. God told you, then we're going to all party with what God told you. And if God told you, then God provides for me. Okay, good. Are, are you still listening or are you still fighting? I, I feel some of you are fighting with yourself right now. You don't even know what, what's going on. You need to listen to what the Lord is trying to teach you right now. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Okay, good. A pastor is required to speak and lead. Not with his own word, but he speaks and lead by saying, Jesus says, the word says. If I don't speak the word, guess what happened? Are you listening to me? If I don't speak the word, who is the word? The word is Jesus. You're not going to listen to me. I have a hard time for you listening to me when I'm speaking the word. Imagine if I'm not speaking the word. But as long as I speak the word, then my name is less. I'm not in your mess. I gave you the word. I advise you in the word. So what does a shepherd does for his sheep? What does a shepherd does for his sheep? Okay? Now that's the way we teach it. What does it, but see, this is the way the Lord told me, the Holy Spirit. What do you do for my sheep? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do for my sheep? 
If I put you in this position, will you commit to hear my voice? Will you discipline yourself, praise the Lord, and my presence, praise God? Will you allow me to burn off the flesh from you, praise God? Now, I like David. David had it going on. King David had it going on. Well, let's go to Psalm 23, please. And I'm going to show you something right here. This is what a, a shepherd should be doing for Jesus' sheep. <laughs> I like what I'm saying. I like what I'm saying. I'm going to shout for myself. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is what a pastor should be doing for Jesus' sheep. Who sheep? Now, I didn't hear you. Who sheep? Thank you. Not the pastor sheep. The pastor is helping the chief shepherd. Listen to the revelation God gave me. I wish there'd be some people in here that are spirit-filled, and I wish I had a witness. You know, how, you know how the Lord uses me, Dr. Barry? Like the rod and the staff. That's it. I can't take it personal. Again, again, it's so why should I do that? It's not my business. It's God's business. So if Bobby and Billy ain't, ain't acting right, I turn them over to God. I shouldn't be getting upset with Billy and Bob and Itchy and Scratchy and Scratchy and Itchy. <laughs> I, turn them, I turn them over to the Lord. Lord, that's your son, that's your sheep, that's your daughter, that's your sheep. You take care of them. And then he'll give me the words so that I can advise that sheep. All right, here we go. Psalm 23, you there? Good. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He does what? He restores my soul. For all the crazy people that are in the house, let's say this together. Say, I include myself. He restores my soul. Thank you. Thank you. He leads me in the path of the righteousness. For whose sake? For his name's sake. He doesn't do it for the pastor. He doesn't do it for the bishop. He doesn't do it for the overseer. He does it for the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. This, write this down. There's power in the name of Jesus. And stop trying to do things without using the name of Jesus. You keep doing your, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do my... You want to put your own strength into the thing, and you're just messing up. And meanwhile, your blessing is waiting for you, but you can't hold on to your blessing. You can't grab your blessing because you're too stubborn. So either you're stubborn, you're grumbling, you're complaining, and the man of God is crying out, Father, in the name of Jesus, open up their eyes. Open up their heart. Open up their ears so they can receive your word. Because your word is the answer to their solution. The word, all right? Okay, Psalm 23, right? We read it, right? He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of the righteousness for his name's sake. Number one, this is what a pastor should be doing for God's sheep. He should be providing water and pastures. Write it down. Write it down, please. If your pastor is not washing you with the word, then there's a problem. Okay. Let's go to John chapter 4, verse 14, please. John 4, 14. Thank you, Jesus. John 4, 14. Please. When you're there, give me an amen. Your pastor should be providing water for you. When you come in thirsty, he should give you something to drink and pasture. In other words, he should put you in a place. You know what a pasture is? A green pasture and a place that you're safe. Yes, sir. And a place that no danger can come to you. Praise the Lord. All right? 
So when your pastor feeds you the word of God, praise the Lord, you know what he's doing? He's putting you in a place that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Praise the Lord. All right, so you're there, John 4, 14, right? But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes fresh, bubbling, spring within them, giving them eternal life. I'll let you find it, and then you can read it. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me besides the still water. He refreshes you. You came in thirsty. You came in dry. You came in looking like a prune. When you leave, you look like a sunshine. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Number two, this is what a pastor should be doing. He should be protecting and leading. How does one protect and lead? Praise the Lord, somebody. Well, you ready to go to the next chapter? Amen. Let's go to the book of Judges. Book of Judges. Right next to Joshua. The beginning of your Bible. Judges. You got Joshua. And then after Joshua, you have Judges. Okay. Somebody say hallelujah. Wait a minute. Mm, not good. Okay. Wow. Oh, well, that's it. What does your King James says? Because I'm in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> huh? Chapter 5, verse 2. I'm sorry. Judges 5, 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read it, Mother Dottie. What does it say? Out loud. Praise the Lord. So it says, Israel leaders took charge the people gladly followed. Okay? Uh, a pastor is supposed to be able to take charge through the word of God and the people is supposed to follow. That's how you get, that's how you stay in a place of protection and that's how you get, in, that's how God leads you, praise the Lord, when you hear the word of God. So that means the man that you're following or the woman that you're following should be filled with the word of God. So once again, he needs to tell you, this is what Jesus says. This is what God says. Not, this is what we're going to do because I am the pastor. Brother, sister, you're not Peter Piper. No. Use the word. Whew, hallelujah. I feel like running, I tell you. Praise God. I feel like shouting. Praise God. Amen. Some of you don't. <laughs> You'll keep going in circle no matter what position in life you're in. Let me tell you. If you don't get to understand this teaching that God has given us right here. This is a gift from God. And he's allowing the world to see it through that internet. This is the way God Man and woman should be leading and protecting through the word of God. Amen? Number three, a pastor should turn the sheep away from danger and keep them safe. 
So there's three things he does. He provides water, he protects and leads, and he should be able with the rod and the staff. The rod is the word of God, you know, sir. The rod, with the word of God, I should be able to bring you back and turn you away from danger and keep you safe. Amen? And how, we, how will he be able to do that? By teaching you Psalm 91. Just write it down. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Your pastor should be teaching you how you should dwell in the shelter of the Most High. That's why I send you to Texas. That's why I teach you the way I do. How I've been trained, I want to transmit it to you so that you can train others. You get it? In Mark 16, he didn't say, go and make members. He said, go and make disciples. So that means you should be making disciples now. You're still being taught by now. You should be teaching. That's what he said in the book. Praise the Lord, somebody. But the good thing about this is never too late. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm enduring. Say, I'm enduring. I'm enduring. It's just part of the program. It's just part of the lesson. Praise the Lord. But I won't grumble anymore. I won't complain anymore. But I will pray and get my answer. Praise the Lord. All right? Great. Now, the Lord expects something from the shepherd. The Lord expects something from the pastor. See, the same way God expects something from you, he expects something from me. God expects you to follow the pastor as, as he followed Christ. If the man is feeding you the word, if the man is, is sitting down with you and you're having a relationship with the man of God and you're seeing that his heart is filled or the woman is filled with the word of God, then you have an obligation. Okay. I know it took me a while. Mm -hmm. it took me a while to understand it. So, okay, Lord, I am breaking covenant. Okay, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34, please. Ezekiel 34. Notice, sister, we're in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Ezekiel. Go to the book of Ezekiel. He was a major prophet. Somebody say amen. You need to overcome that test already. You need to overcome that test. Stop giving place to that test. Stop giving power to that test. How you go through that test? How, how do you go through that test? You go through that test by putting on the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's how you go through that test. Stop, stop giving it power. Praise the Lord. Giving it power. Oh, 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 I can't believe this. Oh, you don't know what I'm going to. Oh. Sounds like, um, everybody here remember Hee Haw? Remember that? Oh, poor me. Oh, agony me. <laughs> so you. <laughs> Stop that. I ain't calling you to say, oh, poor me, oh, agony me. Somebody there? Because I ain't there yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be there soon. Hey, Amen. I'll be there. I'll get there. Ezekiel what? What I said? Ezekiel 34? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, poor me. Oh, agony me. All right. 34. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read out of a New Living Translation. You follow on your King James, all right? Fair enough? 34, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is what the Lord expects a shepherd to do. You ready? You enjoying yourself, Pastor Miriam? Praise the Lord. Thank you. The Lord is good. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man prophesies against the shepherd, the leaders of Israel. Give them this message from the sovereign Lord. What sorrow awaits you, shepherd, who feeds yourself, my God, 
instead of your flocks. Shouldn't a shepherd feed their sheep? You drink the milk, you wear the wool, and you butcher the best animal, but you let your flock starve. Seeing the impossible faith center, that ain't happening here. I feed the sheep of God. I feed myself, because if I don't feed myself, how can I feed you? How can I transmit something I don't have inside of me? Praise the Lord, somebody. In fact, give me three hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Six things the Lord expects of a shepherd. Number one, please, let's time to write. Number one, he calls the pastor to feed the flock. It's okay to preach to the flock, but Reverend Virgilio, that's why I have elders. When it's their turn to get up here and do something, they can preach, they can teach, do whatever you want. How are you going to get the word? How are you going to get fed? Number two. Number one, to feed the flock. That's what a pastor needs to do. If the pastor is not feeding the flock, he's not pastoring. Number two, to strengthen the weak. How many of you have come in the house of God and you felt weak, you felt down and out, and when you left this place, and I guarantee you when you leave this place today, you feel strength, praise the Lord. You feel like, I'm energized, thank you, God. And that's what a pastor is supposed to do, strengthen the weak. How do you strengthen the weak? With the word of God. How do you strengthen the weak? You exhort them. Come on now, you don't break them down. You exhort them. You don't condemn them. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ. But you do correct them. God correct those he loves. So don't get upset when the pastor tells you, not in the flesh, guys. Not in the flesh, ladies. Why? He's protecting the environment. He don't want the outsider to come. He wants this to be God's place. Come on, somebody. Very simple. Number, number three, you know what he does? He heals the sick. A pastor should be healing the sick. How do you heal the sick? Through the word of God. You feed them vitamin. The vitamin, the vitamin. You, listen, listen. Medication. Medication. This is your medication I'm feeding you. I would like you to take your medication. You meditate and medicate in the word of God. There you go. When you meditate in the Word, you'll become whole. When you meditate in the Word, you'll become free. So you meditate and medicate in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. So the pastor should be healing the sick. Okay, number four. Everybody's okay? Breathe in, breathe out. Some of you are doing this. Ow, it hurts. Well, why did you come to the house of the Lord? Because you want to hear a sermon? Not here, you ain't. Because I want to hear some preaching. Well, put on TBN. There's a lot of preachers there. You came to the house of God, you need to get fed. There's a banquet in this house. And we all should be eating and drinking. And you should leave nice and full. Number four, to bind up the broken. We should be doing some binding up. Things that are broken, we should be mending them together. Praise the Lord. Not screaming at you and telling you that you're going to hell. <laughs> Not telling you things that, <laughs> instead of picking you up, is going to put you down. That's not our exhortation. Okay, number five. A pastor should be bringing back what was driven away. Now, some of you know that through experience here. I will go after that which God tells me to go after. You may say, where's so-and-so? Too late. The Lord already told me. Go after her or him 
or leave him alone. You know what he says? That's my sheep. Leave him alone. That's my sheep. Leave her alone. Okay. You don't have to understand that because you're not in the office. But I'm in the office. And some of you know me well. I've gone to the end to find somebody and bring them back. And when they come back in, they act like they're doing me a favor. I ain't getting no, no praise in here. Praise the Lord. See, that's why it's good for you to talk to who? Jesus, before you do a move. Write that down. Before I do a move, I need to talk to Jesus. I need to walk and talk to who? To Jesus. And he will answer back. Believe me. You need to walk and talk to Jesus. Oh, boy, here it goes. I'm walking. You and me, and I'm talking. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you and me. Praise God, somebody. Don't get bound up on me now. We ain't religious now. Praise the Lord. And we ain't fooling around. We're teaching the Word of God. But you need to walk and talk to the Lord. Praise God, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise God, somebody. Thank you, Father. Can't do it on your own. So you have to go, you go and bring back what was driven away. But before you do that, you make sure, Father, it is your will for me to go after this person. Because God could be teaching that person a lesson. And then you go and convince that person and you love on that person. You bring that person gift. You give that person gift. Come on, I'm talking to you. You give that. What do you need? What do you want me to take care of? Oh, I'll take care of that for you. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And God's teaching that person a lesson. And I just went and messed up everything God was doing. Now, guess what? Who's it fall on? It falls on the pastor. And like I said before, that person comes in, Dr. Barry, and that person acts like they're doing us a favor by being here. You ain't doing, God don't need you to be here. God don't need you to be in his house. You need to be in his house because you need to be in his house. All right, somebody, praise the Lord. So that's number five. Number six, I need to be seeking the lost, and the others need to be helping me that. There's people that are lost, and they need to come into the house of the Lord. That's number six. Number one, to feed the flock. Number two, to strengthen the weak. Number three, to heal the sick. You got that? Okay, number four, to bind up the broken. Number five, to bring back what was driven away. Number six, to seek the lost. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to James. When you finish writing, go to James chapter 5. I'll show you right now. This is what the Lord is telling me. <clears throat> Ooh, Lord, praise <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. And then some of you, after we go to James, I'm going to give you a, med I'm going to give you a, a medication. He just told me to uh, write a prescription to you, and we're all going to go there. This prescription is going to help you overcome depression. Amen? Nobody needs a medication in here to overcome depression, praise the Lord. Okay, let's repent. We're going to go to hell now if we, if we lie in the house of the Lord. Nobody needs a medication to overcome depression. You mean you don't fight with that sucker? He doesn't come to you and visit you and knock on your door? He doesn't knock on your door? Do you turn around and tell that depression, you keep on knocking, but you can't come in? Okay. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. The book of James chapter 5. He told me differently. Some of you hear his knock every day. That filthy spirit. Don't you know? Tell it. Tell that spirit. You ain't got no armor. Tell him you ain't got no armor. Jesus stripped you from your armor. You ain't got no armor. I'm the one with the armor. Praise the Lord. Say that. I'm the one with the armor. 
I got a sword. I got a shield. I got a helmet. I got a belt. Praise God. I have the sandal. Praise God. You ain't got no armor. Why are you showing up at my door? Who sent you to my door? I feel the Holy Ghost. Who sent you to my door? You got to talk to it like that. But you have no business talking to you. You, you, you have no problem talking to yourself, but, but you won't talk and, and, and tell the enemy to go fly a kite. And said you entertain him. He comes in, he goes, you know you're depressed today. And you say, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. Okay, James, chapter 5. Uh, Dr. Barry, read it for me, please, sir. 14 and 15. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. So the elder and the pastor should be doing this. Praise the Lord. It is the believer's responsibility to call the elders or the shepherd. I want you all, especially those that are involved with the healing school. It is the believer's responsibility to call the elder or the shepherd. Not the shepherd and the elder responsibility to find out who's sick. Why didn't you come? I was sick. Then why didn't you call? Man, nobody helping me out here. Praise the Lord. I'm teaching the word. Everybody looking at me like I'm a baboon eating grits. Praise the Lord. Where were you? I was sick. Why didn't you call me? Is it my responsibility? No, it's your responsibility to call the elder and the shepherd and say, pray for me, brother. I'm sick. And then I pray for you. It's not the shepherd responsibility. The shepherd responsibility is this. Write it down, family, and I'm going to close up soon. The shepherd responsibility is this. This is my responsibility, to minister to the people. Minister to the people what? The word of God. That's number one. You want to write it down? The elders also should be ministering to the people. Are you listening to me, elders? The person complained, you don't join them. Yeah, you're right. Well, we're getting older, you know. I want to slap you so hard. Slap the devil out of you. Contradicting the word. And then you call yourself a minister. Yeah, I understand. Oh, pray for me. I got this problem. It, it came against me. You know what I did? I trained, I pray, and I stay in the presence of God. And I spoke with people that I know that has praying ministry. I mean healing ministry. Are you listening to me? Praise the Lord. I didn't go, and then I went to somebody who I know that have a prayer ministry. Pray for me. And I went, pray, pray for me, and you send healing. When you pray, say, Father, heal them in the name of Jesus. That's what I got. I didn't get, well, you know, you are getting older. If you will only lose some weight, shut your mouth. <laughs> lose some weight. <laughs> You're too big, you know. I know that. I need healing now. And then we pray for my gluttony spirit. <laughs> I ain't getting no help here, honey. I'm not getting no help in here. One demon at a time, please. <laughs> Unless you're Jesus. Then you can pull them all out in one shot. Praise God. Praise the Lord, somebody. So the pastor and the elder is supposed to minister to the people. The pastor and the elder, write this down, is supposed to anoint the people. So you minister to the people, you anoint the people. I got another one. Then you instruct the people so they can receive their healing. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. You come in covenant with me right now. Let's pray. Come on. Let, let's quote the scripture together. 
And I heard, oh, yeah, you're so right. Oh, I don't know. Did you go to the doctor? Oh, he, oh, he put that, oh, yeah, that's a good medicine. Wow. Somebody say this with me three times. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Kind of the word. I'm teaching the word. I'm, I'm, pre- I'm preaching. I'm teaching the word. And I'm contradicting the word. And then you get upset with the man or the elder of God when he tells you that's not. It is I who has the pain. I have the trespasser, not you. Well, with that attitude, let him pay rent. (laughs) So the elder and the the pastor are supposed to minister to the people, supposed to anoint the people, supposed to instruct the people. Number four, advise, advise the people according to the scripture. Not according to you. Well, if I was you, I'll put a heating, uh, ice cold pack. You got, whoa, this is what I'll do. I'll stand on my head and eat cracker and whistle. Praise the Lord, somebody. Healing is within the ministry of the pastor and elders. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? If it's a spirit-filled church, oh, Jesus, I love you. And the word of God is being taught in that, in that place, in that ministry, then we should all be working in healing. But healing is for the people, that's the doctrine they showed you, sir, ma'am. Jesus, I am talking to somebody. I'm talking to that pastor right out there in that camera. I'm talking to you. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the one who took you out of Egypt and took you through the desert and brought you to the promised land. Don't tell me Jesus don't heal. Why is Galatians 3.13? Praise the Lord. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Okay, you there? All right, good. Okay, let's go to one more scripture, please. Let's go to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. Okay, Isaiah 56. We're going to have to go to the Old Testament. Isaiah A major prophet. Isaiah 56. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me see something. Let's read. Wow. Mm, I don't like it in the New Living Translation. Let me do it in the King James. It's okay. You can read in the New Living Translation. I have to do this in the King James. Where are you, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. There it goes. Thank you, Father. I love you. Praise the Lord. Listen, 9 and 10. 9 and 10. You got it? Isaiah 56, 9 and 10. Thank you. My God is so good to me. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Watch what he says. Number nine. All ye beasts of the field come to devour ye. All ye beasts in the forest. Number ten. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot Bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Now I can read it in the, in, 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 in the New Living Translation. 
Come, wild animals of the field. Come, wild animal of the forest. Come and devour my people. Number 10, for the leaders, for the watchman, the watchman, the watchman. The pastor is the watchman. The pastor is the watchman. The pastor is the watchman. The leader of my people, the Lord, watchman, his shepherd, praise God, are blind and ignorant, and they're like silent watchdogs that give no warning when danger comes. They love to lie around, sleeping and dreaming. Oh, God, you going to make me do that? Number 11, like greedy dogs. They're never satisfied. They are ignorant shepherds, all following their own path, intent, intent on personal gain, Intent on personal gain. Verse 12. Come, let's say, let's get some wine and have a party. Let's all get drunk. Then tomorrow we'll do it again and have even a bigger party. The shepherd are referred as to, uh, referred to as a watchman. I want you to know some. My name Gregory. And the Hebrew means watchful. I am your watchman. Praise God. And the responsibility of a watchdog is to bark. Praise the Lord. Or to give warning when a wolf approaches the flock. So the, pa the pastor, the shepherd, should be like a, like, like a dog. My God. Ready to bite somebody. When someone get near Someone else, they're not supposed to be getting near. When, when somebody want to come and, and, and put dissolution in you, that, that shepherd should be ready to bark and not just like a silent dog, a mute dog, doing nothing. The Bible in the New Testament, Jesus referred to uh, that type of animal as a wolf. Um, and, he, and, he, and he preferred, he, 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 he called them false prophets. As wolf. Go to Matthew 7, please. Matthew, you can't say I didn't teach it tonight. Praise the Lord. You can't say I didn't teach it tonight. Praise the Lord. Matthew 7, please. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. <clears throat> Matthew 7. <clears throat> oh, my God. <laughs> He's gone mad. Praise God. <laughs> 715, please. 715. <laughs> Let me see something. If I can do it in uh, King James, maybe. Mm -hmm. Can I read it? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. I don't want to get into it, the rest of it because I won't be able to get out. I have to. Okay. As a shepherd... I cannot be a mute watch dog. Are you listening to me, pastors and elders? Elders and pastors, you cannot be a mute watch dog. No good. When danger's in the house, you need to bark. And bark loud. Praise the Lord. You're not supposed to be spiritually asleep. And deal with the people's flesh around you. Those that are frustrated. 
those that don't know where they're going, deal with them. Let the presence of God inside of you change their atmosphere. You don't go in, I'm giving you something, this is a good nugget here. You don't go into their atmosphere, you let them come into your atmosphere. Praise the Lord, you hearing me? Don't go into the flesh, let them come into the spirit. When you get, go into the flesh, you're in the same level as them. You let them go into, you let them come into the spirit, praise the Lord. You're welcome, sir. One more scripture? One more? Only quarter to nine. One more? And then I'll get you out. If not, I can close off. Believe me. I, I got the food. Bring it on? Okay. Whew, God. It's the Holy Spirit. I want to I wanna close up more than you. I'm fine. Believe me. I'm fine. Go back to Ezekiel. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Let's see what Ezekiel says. Thank you, Father. I love you and praise you. Let's go back there. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. Wow. 33. Let's do seven. Let's do eight. Let's do nine. Just three. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you want to read Ezekiel, read it on your own. 34 talks about the shepherd of Israel, the good shepherd. Praise the Lord. 35, it talks about the message for Edom. 36, it talks about the restoration of Israel. Everybody, look at yourself. You are Israel. You are Israel. You are Israel. Either you're Israel or you're Ishmael. Ishmael represents the flesh. Israel represents the spirit. Either you walk like an... Either you walk like Ishmael or you walk like Israel. You choose. You there? Can I read? Number seven. Now, son of I am making you a watchman. You know what a watchman is? A pastor, a shepherd. For the people of Israel. You in, you in Ezekiel 33. Seven, eight, and nine. So here we go again. Now, son of man, I'm making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say. Warn them for me. So what a pastor should be doing? Listening to what Jesus says. Listening to what the word says. Praise the Lord. Number eight, if I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their way, they, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their death. Hmm. Let me tell you something right now. You better go suck a lemon. You're not going to hold me. God ain't going to hold me responsible for something that you're doing and you don't want to receive it. Okay, number nine. But if you warn them to repent and they don't repent, they will die in their sin. But you will have saved yourself. So, I have to say to you this. Father God has made me a watchman of the house of Israel. This is the house of Israel, and I will watch, I will pray, and I will rule, and I will teach, and I will shepherd. Yes, I will. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Praise God, somebody. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. All right. I'm going to talk to the, out, the people out there, people that are watching. 
Those of you that don't have Jesus in your heart, this is your opportunity, this is your time to confess with me, with your mouth, as I confess with my mouth, that Jesus, the Lord, Jesus, the Son of God, He died for you and rose again on the third day. So ask Him right now, come into my life and forgive me for my sin. I know my condition. I need your position. Please bring provision. I make this decision now. In Jesus' name, if you pray this prayer with me, you know my email. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Google+. Plus. Pastor Greg with 2G Marilla at gmail.com. And congratulations. The angels that are in heaven are rejoicing. They're having a party that you confess Jesus is Lord. Thank you, and we'll see you real soon. God bless you. Amen.